Enzo, the team from Italy, the Italian champion in white. And uh, the game is starting now. So we see Italy here. is in uh, first ball yeah. contact and ball possession and we're already on the way to the Swiss basket and the Swiss defenders are in position but uh, we see the tables turning. Um, the Swiss recover the ball from out of the hands of the Italians and we move into the um, Italian half of the pool and uh, let's see if the Italians managed to fend the Swiss off and are able to break uh, again because break through uh, and into the half of the Swiss because this was a clear uh, decision for clear move for the Swiss to strip the ball out of the hands of the Italians in the first second and be able to attack right away but uh, until now I see the Italians do quite good uh, for checking keeping the Swiss away from the basket, out of the dangerous zone from the Italian basket. But here they come, there's a uh, Swiss yeah. player blocking and two, three Swiss players now around the basket. But no, it looks it's like here's a pass to the yeah. open uh, yeah. side, close side. Francis, you know, attacking, they're happening. doing a very, very good job here. So far it's quite well done, and so it's a bit, there's a bit favor now for, for Firenze, they're pushing a lot now, it's the first <laughs> one and a half minutes now, we have seen uh, two good team attacks here from Firenze, so uh, they're really, they're really uh, putting effort here in scoring, and Zurich doesn't make it to get out of their own half so far, so uh, there's a lot of, I don't know if they can take really this level, so Piccolo, where the captain is trying to attack the, the Firenze player immediately and tries to, to get in ball possession, but um, yeah, we know that the that, that Zurich here, they're playing in a five meter deep pool, so what they can do is of course keeping the brief and, and keeping the position, we see here now Dominic in the in the defending position, he's not very, not so experienced so far, we see him that he, with the 24, he looks a bit, a bit nervous and uh, he uh, gives a bit spaces, but so far, he does a great job and, and I wonder why the, the Swiss players, they, they let the French player like touching the necks, touching the head, even as the defender position was very, very dangerous, very, uh, which can occur immediately in a, in a proper uh, goal, goal opportunity for the opponent. So they need really to care here, they need to defend more with the feet, but uh, as you see the, the goalkeepers are very, very well experienced, so very good ones. And Firenze is here now, pulled away from the Swiss basket, so they don't have a real good chance. Or the uh, space to come here close. And now there's attack from above. Oh Attacking down nice attack. and using uh, his defending. in the change and uh, one of the players for yeah. uh, free, uh, from Switzerland tries to get into the exchange. Oh. And now a Swiss player stole the basket from the Italians. Yeah. And this is a dangerous, uh, situation, Very dangerous situation for now. the Italians because if the ball is uh, it's on the surface and uh, clustered and if it drops down, but you can have an job. easy you know fast attack. The Italian team has stolen the basket now two times, but the ball is not. The ball is in the cluster, the fixed. So it would be dangerous if Firenze could play with the ball, but they could not. They're fixing the ball, they're saving the ball in the cluster, and as they are aware that the, that the basket is stolen, so very well done. But we see here, if this continues, I'm not sure if, if the Swiss team really can defend this massive attack from Italy here for another 16 minutes, because also this game needs to find a winner. So every game now in this tournament needs to find a winner and so far this, this Italian is, is uh, yeah, attacking here. Free throw against Switzerland and Italy is still in ball control. Now on the surface and on again and here comes uh, another attack. So oh, intercepted by a Swiss nice. player in the middle of the pool. Nice interception and the pass was too long. And here we see Switzerland going for a counter attack to the Italian basket. And already pushing hard in this their first wave. This is a good one. This and is the first good chance in from the head. Awesome. Out of nothing and there here. has to be a change from but the goalkeeper. That's a good chance the to score in between. There is the shot from the referee. Yeah, I think it's a penalty, isn't it? Yeah, it penalty. is. Penalty. I've seen it before because there was holding here yeah, and there was one player was pushing away. And this is what I mean. This is very crazy. Now we have the first good chance here from, from Zurich. And I hope they make the score because um, the Firenze team is really, really pushing here at the, at the Swiss basket. It means. They need to protect the, the basket for, for uh, almost and 40 this minutes now. This is quite tough for Firenze yeah. because they were in the in the in the they, they were, were so close holding to the, the game in their hands yeah. and they were just like uh, not dominating it, but uh, 
but they had a good chance of scoring and now they have a penalty against them. Uh, do you know the... the it's Matthias now from, uh, from Luzern originally, who is now uh, attacking here. He's the, he's the guy he's usually Gabriele, making, I think, on the making the attacks, making the, uh, the penalties. He also made the penalty against the, uh, against the Australian team when they, when they lost 5-1, uh, but they had the chance to score. So he's a very yeah. well experienced player. It was uh, and close, and almost put and it in the yeah. basket. And now he's doing this, oh small, very great. The defender did a great job, the attacker did a great job, but at least he played all around the goalkeeper. This is very, very hard to follow the ball here, to keep the player away. You've seen yeah. this is a very massive player, he's a very strong player, he's a lot of brief, so he keeps, he don't get nervous, he don't get stressed on the water. As a goalkeeper, if you leave uh, lose the ball out of sight, oh, right, yeah. you're already lost. And if you if the attacker is under your uh, under your your bum or under your back, it's it's this is very very hard to defend them. And we go uh, again to the Swiss basket. Italy tries his game again. Uh, so there are four the minutes left, and you see Piccolo here, the captain who the passes are really dangerous. That they do right in front of the Italians yeah. here. And uh, like we've seen before, the Swiss are fast to break out of their defense and intercept these passes. So if uh, Italy keeps on uh, uh, passing this long distance right in front... Oh, there was a good chance! There was a very good one. The, the, uh, there was an Italian lying on the basket with the Swiss goalkeeper, but he couldn't get the ball bringing, uh, brought mm -hmm. him uh, by Gabriele. So that was, that was close. Didn't make it. And still... Italy in ball possession in the middle of the pool under heavy attack. One Italian player by two Swiss players. And here comes the relief player going this forward. Is a passage, and no, again, a the thick captain difficult has a chance pass. now here. But this is also what I really like at the, at the Firenze team. So they are also they're having a lot of brief. They're staying on the water. They, they're playing a bit slower, slower than referee. other teams. So the, the actions are not so explosive. But they're very. So they're calm playing, but they're staying very long on the water. So it looks a bit, it doesn't look very fast, the game start, but very controlled. And now we see here the ball possession for Switzerland, who is now here for, for uh, Zurich. We see here Matthias at the surface, is just holding the ball, waiting for the attacker, attacking him. Of course, they have a 1-0 one, one lead. We have the captain Piccolo now here, passing the ball through on the open side now. And oh, there was a great oh, pass and nice another chance for front from the team. Ah, Frontagin almost but made him a 2 out of nothing. The tackled him, tackled the ball away to the surface. He, g he turned into the, the push from the ball and tackled it away in his arms. This was a very good one. Have you seen it? The Piccolo were passing the ball on the open side, the captain, and the pass came immediately on the, on, uh, on the closed side, was forward to the open side where you have seen, uh, where you have seen Frank Tuchin with the best chance here so far after the 1-0 one, one lead goal. So. I've not expected uh, Switzerland, to be honest, to be that su to, uh, sufficient at the at the um, opponent goal. So they they just for the moment they just two good opportunities and both one was a goal and one was uh, one was a penalty and one uh, was almost a goal. So on the one hand you have Firenze they're attacking a lot, but just had maybe one really good opportunity to score while Firenze has just two opportunities to score and both are very 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 good. So right in front of our uh, commentator box, uh, Thomas Deng is getting ready to jump in here with us. Uh, he's a player from uh, uh, the Austrian team and he will be a commentator for uh, the World Champions Cup uh, Championships in Graz next year. So here again, so Firenze, they lost the ball, they're playing a bit more nervous than they, than they did in the beginning, I'm not really sure why. Uh, but, but I think but Switzerland is doing a better job in better forechecking, job, they course, put him a little yeah. bit on the ball, more pressure so than in the beginning. So they're the players, so they're, they're, they're staying long on the water, we remember there are more or less 11 players, so of course they have a f um, almost full bench, but the players they have in here, there's a mix of very well experienced, very old players, so uh, in terms of what they're being, this was... This was the score and the best chance, yeah, that's very good. So this was a mistake by the defenders and uh, by the goalkeepers. The goalkeepers didn't go down and dive in. So there was a player stealing. So one player came to the surface of Denver. Houston initially was sitting at the goal. He came from the changing bench. He, 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 he went out, came back to the surface. So I don't know why, how this how this. Goal I didn't see could it. Could come that admit. quick. I see here. I sh s try to find it again in the in the stream, but that was the, the 
I'm not really sure, so the defender was in position, but the goalkeeper did not, and even the goalkeeper, there was a lot of time, so there was almost seven, eight seconds the goalkeeper didn't come on his position. Uh, an Italian player has stolen the basket, another player was giving the ball to his other player sitting on the basket and just turned around and dropped the ball in the, in the empty goal. And the end of the first half here, uh, Zurich uh, and is uh, in blue in uh, one goal and uh, Firenze in white with one goal. So we have a break here and uh, let me introduce the upcoming uh, commentators for the next yeah, game. Maybe just a short summarize in, in German for the German spectators. Oh yeah, I always forget ganz kurz. We had here jetzt eine, ein Spiel uh, der, der Schweizer Rekordmeisters Zürich gegen Firenze. Wir hatten in der ersten Phase beginnend uh, eine starke Druckphase der Italiener. Die erste gute Chance dann der Schweiz um Mitte der ersten Halbzeit war direkt uh, eine massive Attacke, die mit, einer, mit einem Foul verhindert wurde. Der italienische Torwart hatte sich mit der Hand festgehalten. Den Strafhof, der wurde ausgeführt führt von der Nummer 7, Matthias Dufour, der dann gegen den italienischen Captain der verwandeln konnte. Ähm, Im Gegenzug dazu dann nochmal eine weitere gute Chance von Frank Trittin, der einen Pass bekam von Vorarbeit von Piccolo, der erst auf die geschlossene Seite passte. Der Pass wurde direkt weitergeleitet nach auf die offene Seite. Frank Trittin hier scheiterte dann aber am italienischen Torwart und dann in der Schlussminute die, der große Schock nochmal für Zürich. In einer Druckphase kam der Torwart nicht runter, acht Sekunden lang. Ein Italiener klaute den, den, die Torposition, bekam den Pass von seinem Mitspieler und legte ihn quasi ins leere Tor. So viel jetzt zum Halbzeitstand 1-1 und ich gehe wieder zu dir. <laughs> Hallo Thorsten. <laughs> you want to introduce one? <laughs> yeah, I want to introduce you the the upcoming uh, uh, commentator game. We have uh, behind me already waiting uh, uh, Jörg Ertel. He wants to see, uh, for sure wants to see the women teams coming up. And uh, also we will have uh, Thomas Denk from the Austrian uh, team. He's playing here so he doesn't have that much time. But he will be uh, one of the commentators at the... Um, World Championships in Graz 2019 and uh, as you might know uh, we invited uh, the team that has the time from Graz from the upcoming uh, the organization team from Graz here to the Champions Cup so they can already uh, work with us and uh, share knowledge with us and uh, have a little uh, look into a, a huge uh, big competition so we have Lisa Sebros here with us and uh, like I said Thomas Deng doing the comments uh, Gabriel Tien as you see in the picture here is walking around uh, hopefully he will be back in the commentator box one day we invited him over and over again but uh, he only only was here for the beginning but now he's doing interviews around the pool hopefully uh, we're looking for uh, seeing hearing hearing him in the live stream comment uh, um, Jörg you want to jump in right now or after the game Okay, then I give over, uh, there is uh, Jens Stingel in the camera, we saw the Jens. Um, so I give over to Jörg, uh, he will be uh, finishing this game together with Thorsten, yep. and then we have uh, Thomas Denk coming in from the uh, Austrian team. So now we are back in the second half, it is a, a equal game of both teams, we had more ball possession on the side of Firenze, but more sufficient or more very very close or m more more um you can say close score situation on the uh, swiss side so we had a good uh, scoring opportunity from frank the team and the score from uh, the, the penalty score from uh, from matthias dufour now we see here again the pattern at the italian side they're trying to steal the basket and uh, so the Jewish really needs to take care that they're that they are they don't let the, the Italian players st uh, steal the basket because this is probably the, the most sufficient and best uh, experienced um, strategy oh. so far. Oh, this was a great attack now. It was well defended by Daniel Yusin who's sitting on the basket, but I'm not really sure what he's showing now. There was a shoulder in the basket. It's a, it's a penalty. Oh. This was a very good chance for an Italian, and of course, so he he dropped with the shoulder inside of the basket. This was the reason. Uh, he, he could defend this attack because the attack came massive from the open side. The defender was not really in a good position here to, to defeat it. So the, the Italian player had a good opportunity here to bring a pressure at the, at the, at the um, Swiss goalkeeper. And now we see here the penalty opportunity now to score, to get in the lead. And we see here the captain Piccolo with the number three is trying to defeat this. One is a very well experienced player, he's uh, also an international referee, but he will is attacked here at the head so far. We, we have seen 
Oh, very well. He's, he got the ball. He's in the cluster. And he brought the ball outside of the push. This was very well defeated by the uh, uh, Zurich captain. Uh, Marcel Vetter, also known as Piccolo, he made here a great, great job. He's, uh, yeah, one of these very well experienced uh, Swiss players of this old generation. They played national and international um, for many, many years. And uh, this was quite well what he's done here. We remember also last year, in the last year Champion Cup, in the last game of the tournament, uh, also uh, Firenze and Zurich had a penalty shooting to find out who is going to win. Maybe we see here also penalty shooting and we also remember that also in this year Marcel Vetter could defeat the final penalty. What was the reason then for Zurich uh, winning the, the last match last year against Firenze? So this time we have seen now two, two goals, two penalties, one got in and one was defeated. What do you think about this level of the game, Devil? Well, these two teams, they don't really have a chance against the higher no. level clubs. I think this so is obvious. Because <laughs> we've seen the results from yesterday with 14 or 12 0. So they, 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 got, they received a lot of goals, yeah. These matches are now more even. They have both clubs have a chance to win. Yep. It's more fun for them, I think. They, they, they feel like they're in the match. Yep. It's not. They also brought some not well experienced players or some newcomers in the Good. team. So what is usually not the, the best place to bring players to gain experience? Is it something to use your experience here? I think the a very big difference between the top clubs and the lower clubs is yeah. control of the area around the basket. Because mm -hmm. even if a, an opposing player doesn't have the ball, if they come, they swim in yep. and they lie next to your basket, that screen is very damaging especially when they have large strong players who can come on the other side they're yep. looking for that and uh, these guys uh, they play at their clubs they have a certain level and they're not meeting that kind of competition on a regular basis so they don't have the discipline to to, to keep everything together and mm. that's that is one of the, the big differences so I don't know how would you rate the the level of the teams that are maybe at the top, I think the top elite yeah. The, the I think I think you you mean uh, what sh what needs to be considered is that even in a in a team like Firenze or or Zurich, there are players who have the level to play on a high level. So for example, if you take Marcel Vettel, the captain, who's who has a lot of brief, who is a very good goalkeeper, this could be a support for almost every team in the Euroleague because he's a very good goalkeeper. Mm. But now playing here with others like maybe not so strong and not so you have a gap between the teams. So you have very good but on the other side not not so well experienced players and this is a mix what uh, is definitely you see the top teams like Rixo or Bamberg you see that the teams are you need every single needs to give 100% and you have one weak point within this chain um, attack is immediately destroyed by the opponent team and now we see here a time penalty for Italy so this is now a very good chance here for the Swiss team to make another goal. There are 4 minutes 13 left and the next 130 minutes Italy is just playing with 5 players. So even if Swiss as uh, Zurich is not scoring there, then 3 remaining minutes they need to to get through to bring the game into the penalty shooting. So far I'm, I'm not really sure how I'm seeing winning this game because both teams made a good job, had good opportunities here to decide the match so far so it will be definitely the last four minutes doesn't matter so we have one time minute time penalty left for the Italian teams I assume that Italy will just try to bring this time penalty over the time trying to keep the ball control but they lost it now you see here Matthias with the number seven getting the ball here trying to pass through and this is a oh. good chance here for number 13 here and it's again I'm not really sure if this technique of Italy is really a lot because I always seen the arms around the ring this looks very very weird I'm not really sure if this was a if this was not a holding but referee didn't give the penalty so obviously they, they accepted this this kind of defending so 
We are three minutes left. There are certain so ten seconds left for the time penalty. So Switzerland had here, uh, or the Swiss team had here a uh, power play. The power play is now over. So both teams are again with six players in the water. Three remaining minutes to play, and if there's no goal in the next three minutes, we will see both teams in a penalty shooting, in a sudden death penalty shooting. It's one against one. But let's see what happens now. Two, uh, two and a half minutes is a long time for a match. And now ball possession for Switzerland, number 13 here. You see Matthias with number seven at the crown. The ball is dropping down. Then the Houston is a guy with the black shirt here supporting. He gets the ball, passing. Number 88. Heusen Sebastian now here having the ball and this is passing again. Daniel Jusen. Frank 13 here. Pass the ball to Daniel Jusen. Passing the ball back. We see here now Matthias. So there are a couple of very if you see now that the the experienced players in the water, they have good chance now to bring pressure to the basket. If they change some players and bring not so experienced players inside, a lot of attacks are immediately stopping because the players they don't know how to go to the basket maybe they don't know how to score or scared to score or have them in the position maybe they're scared to be attacked very hard so they, they keep a bigger distance a safety distance to the towards the baskets and this is also the big difference we have there in comparison of the top teams and maybe the weaker teams of the champions cup for sure there are some players who are not willing to go to the basket yep. and on the, the best teams, more players can do it. Yeah. We've and seen it in, in almost every top team, we've seen several scorers. Yeah. So even at this Champions Cup, there's no one guy who say, okay, this team, this guy is doing all the job. Because it's really, we have, in almost every team, you have three, four, five people that are scoring frequently. This is also quite important and nice. Look at the match uh, that Bamberg this played last. This was a good last. pass down. Honestly, so we see Piccolo here attacking now with the number three, passing the ball through. Here, this is Dominic here with the 24 here trying to get the ball through. And another attack, so Frontatini here trying to, to manage the ball possession, the ball control here, supported by his player, uh, by his teammate. And this the last minute attack. is a very, very good one. So the pressure is very high here. Piccolo against here, Matthias uh, Marcel Fetter. Pass the ball through, make the long pass on the other side. Now Switzerland is changing the side, coming from the closed side, changing to the open side. Well done here, but Italy, is, is the, the Italian forensic defense is quite good here in this match. But I agree with you, Better is a, an example of a player that he's very good, but uh, he, he in another team he would he would be able to discover his abilities better, yeah, yeah. but now he's in the role of, of the leader, of the leader, of a teacher yes. maybe even, and, and of course as a, as a role model also. So this is what he's taking here now. Of course, M Marcel Federer is a Zurich player who wants to develop the Zurich team. They have a lot of, they, they brought in a couple of new players in the last year. In the last year they were struggling, that the experienced players they don't want to go to the Champions Cup anymore. Of course, they're winning the championship, but don't want to go to the Champions Cup because the teams are very hard there. Mm. And so now the time is over. It is a 1-1 and now the game will be decided in penalty shooting. It will be one against one, one against one. It's every team has the chance to score and the chance to defeat and it must be it must be a winner afterwards so from the moment one team is scoring and the other is not the winner is decided so it's a sudden death penalty shooting what do you think will be will be here in favor to win this penalty shooting in your opinion Deborah? so in this penalty shooting it's not a set number of penalty shots no no usually it's three but at the champions cup it's just one against one and you still have your chance if you as long as you can tie it yeah. doesn't mean that the other team scores a uh, goal course. and a sudden death then you yeah. you have your opportunity yeah so so now we see Mat Matthias to full of the number seven who made already the penalty during the game so this was the one zero lead so he had already a, a good so he's also very well experienced he's he's the first attacker now here and he uh, He's doing a, a, a great job. This was a very clear goal. It was not even has taken 15 seconds. This was very, very quick. So well done by uh, Matthias Dufour, who uh, who is bringing here the first goal of the tournament. So now, if Zurich defeats the penalty, they're the winner. Yep. I assume that it will be Piccolo again, who tries to uh, defeat the penalty, because he's, as you mentioned it already, 
Now he can try out his uh, abilities. This is a chance now to really perform. And we see here again the strong attacker. So we have the same. He's capable of doing it. Oh, it's it. not Piccolo. It's no. someone else now. So I'm well, let's see what it is. He went straight to the basket. Yeah. He attacked. He's doing a good job. And of course, he's he's under the, the, the goalkeeper. The number four from Firenze. He's turning around. He's yeah. turning around, trying. He's holding the ball away. And now he's trying to push the ball in the empty net. And this is very well. This was very well done. Good one. Well, he outlasted him. And yeah. you could see that the heavier guy managed to shift the lighter player away. Yeah. And once he got that advantage, it was just a matter of time because he couldn't That's reach his, the ball. And he fixed the goalkeeper. Yeah. And the goalkeeper was putting a lot of, of action to keep himself at the basket. Even if he would have not scored, I assume the player could not make it 45 seconds. Mm -hmm. So this takes a lot of brief and a lot of energy then. So as a, as a defender, you probably need to uh, defend really proper. And now we see here, the Swiss he player, got a very uh, good he got a very in his face, but this is, this is internationally, it's allowed. It's attacking that, it's number 13 here, who is m that's Martin Werner. That's, that's it. Oh, and he brought the ball to the surface. Firenze has won. So, Firenze defeated this one. Now we need to see. Zurich now needs to defeat the penalty, otherwise they're losing the match. If Italy scores, if Firenze scores, they are the winner of this game. They should win. Yeah, so uh, Piccolo, I assume Piccolo will be now the defender here. And I assume he will do a really good job, but if he can manage it, there's a lot of pressure now on him. Because he really needs to defeat. Well, that, the, the goalie got his feet up yeah. and defended and kept him off for a long time. Yeah. And there's a choice you make if you go straight down to the basket and stay there. The other person is going to try to come okay, underneath it's, you. Uh, it's Matthias who yeah. made the first, the first penalty. Now is here, has the task. Oh, this was a great one. So, after the penalty shooting, we have a winner. The winner is Firenze, who is winning this match in penalty shooting after the time match was 1-1. Italian, the Mannschaft der italienischen Meister Firenze gewinnt gegen Zürich dieses Spiel mit im Strafwurf werfen. Das Spiel endete 1-1 in der regulären Zeit. Äh, Matthias Dufour brachte die Mannschaft in Führung. Das 1-1 fiel dann unmittelbar äh, kurz vor der Halbzeit, als der italienische Spieler die Torwartposition klaute, den Pass bekam und in den leeren Korb reinlegte. In der zweiten Halbzeit haben wir nochmal sehr gute Torchancen von beiden Mannschaften gesehen. Auch eine Zeitstrafe gegen Italien, die zwei Minuten in Unterzahl gespielt haben, konnte Zürich hier nicht mehr äh, zur Führung nutzen. Im Strafwurf werfen konnte Matthias Dufour Zürich in Führung bringen. Auf der anderen Seite konnte Italien ausgleichen, als dann ähm, die Nummer 13, glaube ich, was Martin Wörne nicht verwandeln konnte gegen Italien, waren es dann die Italiener hier aus Firenze, die das Ding sichern konnten. Und nun hier mit Spielstand, das ist das 3 zu 1, glaube ich, dann äh, dieses, äh, oder nochmal 2 zu 3, genau, 3 zu 2, 3 zu 2, dieses Spiel hier gewinnen können. So, ich gebe weiter an uh, Jörg, so I'm passing through to Jörg, who is now taking over and uh, commentating the next three more matches. This was a 2-1 victory then, so, 3-2. Yeah, I'm back. Uh, Hello. Hi. So, um... We will see the next game, and uh, this is the female quarterfinal, uh, FS Duisburg against Firenze. So we call it the money game, because uh, that's uh, the, 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 the quarterfinals, uh, and um, oh, we have some. Oh, maybe I could put it on the uh, floor here. Uh, no, 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 no. We're okay. playing, playing with the with the cable cables, to, yeah. to do this. So uh, for me, it's a double job. So I'm interested. To, oh, basically, it's three part job because on the one hand, I'm still a member of uh, this book and one of the historical member of this team. Somehow founding the team in this book. Um, it's so uh, my home club. I'm interested uh, to see the national players and I want to be a fair commentator 
to see this. Um, we are now in the process for the selection of the ladies for the World Championship and this book uh, brings up uh, several candidates. They have uh, Who have not been on the team before. Yes, there are some uh, which are not on the team, some are uh, historical on the team and they have to prove their capability to be there. So since uh, Helsinki we are s searching to optimize the team, maybe to make the team younger, to make the team experience. And for me as a national coach it's always good to see at the Champions Cup different lady teams so I can uh, identify several of the uh, potential players and see them in real competition. The training camp is uh, always an opportunity, but in a real competition where they have to win, it's uh, much more important you see the capability, especially the mental capability. And that is something which I like to focus uh, focus in, in no, it's fine. Uh, focus in uh, in the future um, uh, for the the team of Germany their mental stability. So that's where we were missing in the last championship. There was some more pressure on that uh, on the ladies uh, as a world champion. You expect to win a each game, mm. and when something goes wrong they stop believing in themselves. Well, <coughs> the the average age of the women on Akaren is 38. Mm. So that's quite old. And what about Duisburg? And Duisburg has uh, also some <laughs> dinosaurs. Can <laughs> I say that? <laughs>